Welcome to another Hero Pack Focus Champions. I'm JP from Northern Lights over Arkham, and this time I will be overviewing the Doctor Strange Hero Pack. I will be going over the new player cards that come in this Hero Pack, so stick around to find out if you should get this Hero Pack into your collection. Let's get started. If you like my content, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Doctor Strange is the fifth Hero Pack to come out for Marvel Champions the card game. Let's look at the signature cards Doctor Strange comes first. I will first look at the player cards going into the player deck and then the invocation deck cards. The alter ego side is Stephen Strange. He has a recovery value of 3 and the mystic trait. Stephen Strange begins the game with an invocation deck. His special ability is Natural Talent, Action, discard the top card of the Invocation deck, limit once per phase. Stephen Strange has a hand size of 6 cards and 10 hit points. Stephen Strange's ability helps you to find the right Invocation card for the current situation from your Invocation deck, so it is a good ability. Next, let's look at the Hero side. Doctor Strange has a Thwart value of 2, an Attack value of 1, and a Defense value of 2. His traits are Avenger and Mystic. His hero ability is Spell Mastery, Action, Exhaust Doctor Strange and pay the cost of the top card of the Invocation deck, resolve the special ability on that card. Doctor Strange has a hand size of 5 and 10 hit points. Doctor Strange seems more as a defensive and thwarty type of hero than a strong damage dealer, but he can dish out damage well enough. More on that when we look at his other cards. The signature ally in Doctor Strange's signature card is Wong, who is a 3 cost ally with 1 thwart and 2 attack. Wong has 3 hit points and the mystic trait. Action. Exhaust Wong, choose to either heal 1 damage from your identity or discard the top card of the invocation deck. Wong can be used as a wild resource. Wong is an okay ally to have and helps to get the right invocation card out from the invocation deck, even if you don't have time to go into Alter Ego to use Stephen Strange's ability to cycle the invocation deck. He can also heal you in either identity, so that is useful. Next, we have Astral Protection. It's a two-cost event. It has the spell and thwart traits. Hero action, thwart. Choose a shim. Remove three threat from that shim and look at the top card of the encounter deck. For each boost icon on that card, remove one additional threat from the chosen shim. Astral Protection can be used as a mental resource. There are two Astral Protections in the deck. Astral Protection is a good costed card for what it does. You are guaranteed to remove three threat from a sheen of your choice and can remove possibly more if you hit an encounter card with loads of boost icons. This gives a good thwarting card to be used in aspects with less good threat removal tools. Next up is Magic Blast. It's a 3 cost event. It has the attack and spell traits. Hero action, attack, deal 5 damage to an enemy and discard the top card of your deck. If that card's printed resource has physical, stun that enemy, energy, deal 2 damage to that enemy, mental, confuse that enemy, wild, all of the above. Magic Blast can be used as an energy resource. There are two Magic Blasts in the deck. Magic Blast is a staple damage dealing event for Doctor Strange. I think it's a bit pricey for the guaranteed 5 damage and the fact that you can't be sure of the additional effect from the resource type you discard from the top of your deck. But it's an okay card for dealing the damage. Next is Master of the Mystic Arts. It's a one-cost event, hero action, pay the printed cost of the top card 
of the invocation deck, resolve its special ability, then place it back on top of the invocation deck face up. Master of Mystic Arts can be used as a mental resource. There are two copies of Master of the Mystic Arts in the deck. This is a really strong card. With this, you can play the top card of the Invocation deck multiple times before discarding it, as you don't have to exhaust Dr. Strange to use this event and play the Invocation deck card. You just need to have enough resources to be able to pay for the event multiple times. Next up is Mystical Studies. It's a one-cost event. Alter Ego action. Search your deck and discard pile for Dr. Strange card and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. Mystical Studies can be used as a physical resource. There is one Mystical Studies in the deck. Mystical Studies is a decent card to be used to search for a specific Dr. Strange card you need at your current game state. It is not very flashy and I have not had big plays with it yet. Next we have Protective Ward. It's a one cost event with a spell trait. Hero Interrupt. When a treachery is revealed from an encounter deck, cancel all of its effects and discard it. Protective Ward can be used as a physical resource. There are two copies of Protective Ward in the deck. Protective Ward is a really good treachery cancellation card. Note that it will also cancel the surge keyword from the treachery card in addition to the revelation effect. Next is Sanctum Sanctorum. It's a one cost support with the location trait. Alter Rico action. Exhaust Sanctum Sanctorum. Shuffle a spell card from your discard pile into your deck and draw one card. Sanctum Sanctorum can be used as a mental resource. Sanctum Sanctorum is a really cheap replacement for Avengers Mansion, but it can only be used in Alter Ego. It also lets you shuffle an important spell card from your discard back into your deck, so you can play it more often before decking out. Next up is Cloak of Levitation. It's a 2 cost upgrade with the artifact and item traits. You gain the aerial trait, hero action, Exhaust Cloak of Levitation, Ready Doctor Strange. Cloak of Levitation can be used as a physical resource. Cloak of Levitation works really well with Doctor Strange's hero ability. You can ready Doctor Strange after playing an invocation spell and also ready Doctor Strange if he had exhausted to defend in the villain phase. The aerial trait provided doesn't may have many combos yet, but there will probably be more combos in the future with new cards. Next is Magical Enhancements. It's a one cost upgrade with the condition and spell traits. Play under any player's control. Your hero gains plus one thwart, plus one attack and plus one defense. Post Interrupt. When the round ends, discard Magical Enhancements. Magical Enhancements can be used as an energy resource. There are two Magical Enhancement cards in the deck. Magical Enhancements gives a short buff to your basic actions for the remainder of the round. This includes also the villain phase, so you can boost your or another hero's stats for the whole turn. I see Magical Enhancement as an okay card, but nothing really strong. And last we have the Eye of Agamotto. It's a two cost upgrade with the artifact and item traits. Hero resource, exhaust the Eye of Agamotto, generate a wild resource. The Eye of Agamotto can be used as an energy resource. The Eye of Agamotto is a good resource card when you are in a hero form and need extra resources, for example, to play multiple invocation spells. As it generates a wild resource, it's a perfect combo with abilities that require a specific kind of resource type to activate. All in all, Dr. Strange's signature cards offer a great flexible role and allow you to play Dr. Strange in multiple ways in different aspects. 
In my opinion, this is one of the strongest signature card pools in the game at the moment. Next, let's look at the Invocation deck cards a bit closer. First we have Crimson Bands of Sutorak. It's a 2 cost event, special, stun an enemy and deal 7 damage to it. Place this card in the Invocation deck discard pile. This is the main damage dealing card for Doctor Strange. With the help of Master of Mystical Arts and enough resources, you can deal loads of burst damage to the villain or to defeat multiple high hit point minions to help out your team. It's a really strong card. Next is Images of Icon. It's a one cost event. Special. Confuse the villain and remove four threat from a sheep. Place this card in the Invocation deck discard pile. For one cost, this is a really powerful card for controlling the enemy shimi and threats. Next up is Seven Rings of Rakador. It's a one cost event. Special. Give up to three characters each a tough status card. Place this card in the Invocation deck discard pile. In true solo, I have not had much use for this card, but in multiplayer, making most of all or all of the heroes tough at the same time is really strong. It basically stops one round of hits from the villain really cheap. Next we have Vapors of Baltor. It's a zero cost event. Special. Choose a status card in play. Replace that status card with a different status card. Place this card in the invocation deck discard pile. I have found this card to be maybe the least powerful from the invocation cards, as it is really situational. It can be great if you are either stunned or confused. By playing this, you remove the status and can replace it with tough. You can also remove tough from the villain and make the villain either stunned or confused, depending what you need at that point. The last invocation card is Winds of Batum. It's a zero cost event, special, draw three cards, place this card in the invocation deck discard pile. Winds of Batum is nothing flashy, but just pure acceleration. If you can play it multiple times, you will have all the resources you need to do a really big play that turn. As you can see, all of the invocation cards are really powerful. The balancing factor is that they come up in a random order, but you can cycle the invocation deck a bit with either Stephen Strange or Wong to fight the right invocation card for the situation at hand. The invocation deck makes Doctor Strange a really powerful hero to play. Doctor Strange comes with his signature obligation and nemesis cards. Let's look at them next. Doctor Strange's obligation is physical toll. Give to the Stephen Strange player. You may flip to alter ego form. Choose. Exhaust Stephen Strange. Remove physical toll from the game. Or the next event you play costs three additional resources. Discard this obligation after you play an event. As with all the previous heroes, the first choice is the same. You have to exhaust your alter ego and then remove the obligation from the game. The second choice is a bit different from previous zeros. This obligation does not do anything straight away. The next time you play an event, you need to pay three more resources to play that event. This can really slow down your turn and it's a critical moment. Next we have Doctor Strange's nemesis minion, Baron Mordor. He has two shiming and two attack. He has the elite and mystic traits and five hit points. Forced Interrupt. When Baron Mordo attacks you, discard the top card of your deck. If that card's printed, uh, printed resource has physical, you are stunned. Energy, take two damage. Mental, you are confused. Wild, all of the above. Baron Mordo has two boost icons. Baron Mordo is basically a magic plastic with minion. He can hit you hard or slow you down both. It's a good idea to get rid of him as fast as possible. Next we have the Nemesis side shim, Open the Dark 
dimension. It has three boost icons and comes into play with three threat per player. When revealed, place the top card of the invocation deck face down under this shield. When defeated, shuffle the invocation card under here into the invocation deck. It adds an acceleration token. When this side shield comes into play, you may lose your most needed invocation event under it and even if you defeat it right away, you don't get it back as you need to shuffle it into your invocation deck, so it can really hurt you. You should get rid of it as fast as possible anyway because of the acceleration token. The Nemesis cards have two copies of counter spell attachments. They have the condition and spell traits. Attached to your hero, force to interrupt. When you play an event, cancel its effects and discard it. Discard this card. Counter spell has one boost icon. Counter spell can be really nasty, especially if you happen to have your obligation also in play. This can really slow down your play as you need to get rid of this attachment to play your powerful events, either from your hand or from your invocation deck. The last nemesis card is Toth Steel Treachery. When revealed, Alter Ego, discard a card from your hand with the highest cost. Place threat to the main shim equal to the printed cost of that card. When revealed, Hero, discard a card from your hand with the highest cost. Take damage equal to the printed cost of that card. That still has one boost icon. This treachery can be really nasty, especially in true solo, where you can lose the game if you have a high cost card in hand and you are near the threat threshold on the last act of the main G. You also need to be mindful of your health more if this treachery is in the encounter deck. Next, let's look quickly at the other aspect cards that come in the Doctor Strange hero pack. We will start with the protection aspect cards as Doctor Strange comes with the pre-built uh, protection aspect deck. First we have Brother Voodoo. He is a 3 cost ally, he has 2 thwart and 1 attack. He has the adventure and mystic traits and 3 hit points. Response. After Brother Voodoo enters play, search the top 5 cards of your deck for an event card and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. Brother Voodoo can be used as a mental resource. Next we have Clea. She is a 2 cost ally. She has one thwart and one attack. She has the mystic trait and two hit points. Interrupt. When Clea is defeated, shuffle her into her owner's deck. Clea can be used as a physical resource. The third new protection ally is Iron Fist. He is a four cost ally. He has the one thwart and two attack. He has the defender trait and three hit points. Iron Fist enters play with two mystic counters on it. Response. When Iron Fist attacks an enemy, remove one Mystic Counter from him. Stun that enemy and deal one damage to it. Iron Fist can be used as a physical resource. Next up we have Desperate Defense. It's a one cost event. It has the defense trait. Hero Interrupt Defense. When your hero defends against an attack, it gets plus two defense for that attack. If you take no damage from that attack, re uh, ready your hero. Desperate defense can be used as an energy resource. Next is Momentum Shift. It's a two cost event. It has the attack trait, hero action attack. Heal two damage from your hero, deal two damage to an enemy. Momentum Shift can be used as a physical resource. The next new protection card is the Night Nurse. It's a one cost support and has the Persona trait. Uses three medical counters. Action. Exhaust Night Nurse and remove one medical counter from her. Heal one damage from a hero and discard one status card from it. The Night Nurse can be used as a mental resource. The last new protection card is Unflappable. It's a one cost upgrade with the condition trait. Play under any player's control, max one per player. Response. After you defend against an attack and take no damage, exhaust unflappable, draw a card. 
and Flappapol can be used as a mental resource. I really like the new protection allies and also the Nightmares support and momentum shift event. And Flappapol and Desperate Defense cards I have not found to be that impressing so far. Next, let's look at the rest of the new aspect cards in Doctor Strange Hero Pack. First we have Warning, a basic event that costs zero. It has the defense trait. Interrupt defense. When a hero would take any amount of damage, reduce that amount by one. Warning can be used as a physical resource. Then we have the Sorcerer Supreme. It's a two cost upgrade with the title trait. Play only if you have the mystic trait. You get plus one hand size while in the hero form. The Sorcerer Supreme can be used as a mental resource. The new aggression card in Duck Strange Hero Pack is Skilled Strike. It's a zero cost event with the skill trait. Interrupt. When your hero makes a basic attack, it gets plus two attack for that attack. Skilled Strike can be used as a physical resource. The new Justice card is Foiled. It's a zero cost event. Interrupt. When a boost card is turned face up during a shim activation, cancel its boost icons. Foiled can be used as an energy resource. And finally, the new leadership card is Iron Man Tony Stark. He is a four cost ally. He has two thwart and two attack. He has the Avenger trait and three hit points. Reduce the cost to play each upgrade on Iron Man by one. Iron Man can be used as a wild resource. I really like all of the new aspect cards, except maybe Warning, which seems like the weakest card in the whole deck. Especially the Aggression card and Iron Man have been great when I have tried them out. I hope this overview helped you decide if you want to add Doctor Strange into your collection. Let me know in the comments what you think of Doctor Strange's hero pack cards. Thanks for watching and until next time.